Hi, welcome to another video on Synergy MultiViewer. In this session, we're going to go through the layout designer, and I'm going to show you how to make multiple layouts and position players where you like inside the canvas. What we're going to do is go through making one and showing you how it all works inside the tool, and then I'll show you a more advanced one we've created before. So let's turn to the PC we were using before. So here's the MultiViewer we configured in the previous sessions. We've got a standard mosaic set out running. What we're going to do now is turn to the multi-viewer and change it from a mosaic layout to a designer layout. So if I click inside here, it's going to ask me where I would like to load a file from that's going to contain the layout settings and all of the parameters and metadata to draw the multi-viewer. To create this file, we have a dedicated tool. If we look inside Windows here, we can load up Layout Designer. If we open the Synergy multi-viewer layout designer, we're greeted with a view of this. So this is the standard layout designer waiting for me to design a new layout. To get started, I can click here on New or choose File New. It'll pop me up a wizard asking me what my target resolution is. It's best to pick up a resolution that we're going to use on the screen that we're going to display on. So down here, I'm going to pick up a full HD resolution. So this has created a blank canvas for me. I need to zoom out a little bit to see all of its extent. And we can see that we've got one big empty space with grids on. We can also see on the left-hand side, we've got one layout with a graphic and dynamic level. So in here, we can see how the grid size is configured and whether we want to show the grid when we're designing it and if we want to snap the grid on. We can also control the background color uh, and we can place a background image file on. So let's just go in here where I've got a nice gray slate background. So first of all, we've put a, a background on our system. So that's going to give us something that makes this look a little bit better. You can make any kind of layout you like that might signpost other things. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you want to put in there. The first thing we need to do is put a player in. So if we go over to this right-hand side, we have a control area. So underneath the dynamic section, we'll find the very top thing, add player. So I can just drag and drop a player into here. So you can see it makes it quite small by default. So I can just click and make that larger. And then I can position that, and you can see it snapping against all the grids in here. So I've put my first player on here. In the bottom left-hand side, we should find some controls very familiar to people that have seen the previous demonstration when we went through the input tab inside the multi-viewer control itself. This is all replicated in here and allows us to configure the source parameters and the panels and the analysis the same as we have inside the input tab. The one difference is we also get a positioning tab. And this allows us to exactly move things around by pixel inside this system here to position things in free space. We can also choose to lock the player aspect and keep a 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 aspect forced. However, we're happy with leaving the system to decide all this for us. And we can just take this player and then move it in free space again. So to make this slightly interesting, we really should connect the source to something real. So if we click in here, we can take an RTP source. And choosing this dot, dot, dot button, it'll open the Synergy root browser that we have. If I connect to our central browse server, we can see all the sources available to us. I can drill in here, I can drill to one of our satellite receivers and choose BBC One as the source. And that will name the panel and it will set the RTP URL to the specification saved inside Synergy Root. Then we're good to go. So what we can start then doing now is adding some extra players to the canvas. So we can throw some more in here. We could bind this to something else. Let me throw another one in here. Pop this here. As you can see, we can make these any size we like, so they can be quite different to the other sizes. The only thing we have to watch out for, though, is you can't let them overlap. So if they overlap, you see the red color, and it won't let me do that. That's because all the players need to be free in space. However, in the layout designer, we can do more than just add players to the screen. We can add some other interesting devices. So we can add a digital clock to the screen, which looks like this. We get some extra parameters for the digital clock, so we can set time zones. And we can set colors. So we can set some particular colors on here. It's just a simple digital clock that'll let us pick that on there. And we can set its position. We also have an analog clock. So we can drag the analog clock in here. By default, we get a very basic looking analog clock. We can position that in space. But then we've got a few more options in here. So inside the presets, we can pick some different skins. These skins can be customized by anyone that wants to go in and edit the bitmap files composing these clocks. So here we have a standard, clean-looking, classic clock. And we can then use this clock 
and it overrides all of the dials and background settings for when we don't have a skin. So then we can add that clock there, we can add another clock, this clock could perhaps show a different time zone. Set that one to classic two, and then the time zone on this one could be quite significantly later in Taipei. Uh, so we can see different time zones in here. However, nobody knows what clock is what. So what we might need then is one of the static elements, a text label. So I can drag this in, and we can set some freeform text in here, Taipei. It's a bit small, so we can control the font, increase that, set it to bold. We can also change the color, to make that color stand out a lot more. So you can imagine what you could do by having labels, showing different time zones, and adding different metadata onto this canvas. So we've looked at the player, the two clocks. The other element we can drag on is a CPU meter. This CPU meter is quite interesting because not only will it let you see the CPU load of the local multiviewer, interesting if you're setting up engineering dashboards, but you can actually relate it to particular players. Now, if that player happens to be a Synergy Capture server, that then means you'll get the CPU load of the related Synergy Capture server because we pass that metadata through. It's an interesting little power feature. We can also tick to show original PC name because we can embed the PC name inside the stream as well. So if we're running with Synergy Capture, we can decode the Synergy Capture CPU load and the name of the Synergy Capture server in multiple CPU meters. However, if we just leave it set to none, it'll actually display the CPU load of the local PC. The final dynamic entry we can pull in is a really powerful and interesting one. This is a full HTML widget. What this lets us do is actually navigate using an embedded version of Chromium into this panel, and then we can put all sorts of metrics and dashboard information in here. So if we have some other graphing systems or other monitoring systems, we can surface that up inside the HTML panel as information inside the multiviewer. We can just demonstrate this by doing something simple, such as browsing to Google inside the panel. If we tick Show Contents, that should render Google. So you can imagine the kind of powerful integration points you can achieve by having a full browser available inside the multiviewer. Finally, a couple of other static elements exist. We've got a simple rectangle, so we can just draw some boxes around some things if we want. So rectangles can intersect with static entries, although the player will obscure them when it runs. So if we move this across here, we can draw a box highlighting perhaps a particularly important player and write some text. But if a basic rectangle isn't powerful enough for you, we can pull on a full image. So finally, we can take an image panel here, we can take a navigate in here, and we can actually add a, a plain image into the multi-view layout. Under the HTML widget, we can control refresh milliseconds. So here we've got it set to reload every 1,000 milliseconds, which is a little quick. We can just turn that reload off. It's really useful if you've got dashboarding systems on, and instead just leave it on a 500 second refresh time. So if we save that. So here we are on the mosaic, and we're ready to go and take a look at the designer instead. So we click onto designer layout, and then we navigate to the file we just saved, demo Lewis. So we can see here we have one layout with three channels inside it. If we hit apply, MultiViewer will reload and should bring itself up with all the things we set up. So we've got our red box, we've got BBC One playing in here, we've got two clocks with different times, and then we've got Google visible in here. So this HTML widget isn't really supposed to just be pointed at Google, but can let you make some really powerful third-party integration steps here to show other metrics and information in a consistent place. You'll also notice that we've now got the name of this PC and its current processor load visible in here. So we can see how easily this multiviewer server is working uh, and if it's getting a bit too close. However, this multiviewer layout isn't exactly going to win any beauty awards. So let's take a look at one we've used before at other trade shows and show you how it can look if you take some time to fill a bit more in. So what I'm going to do now is open up one of the layouts we've used at a trade show that's got a lot more complexity and some layouts on, and I can show you what we can really do when you put some time into building a layout. So if I go into the PC here and choose File, Open, here's my layout that we've used before. And that will open. You'll immediately see on the layout tree we have quite a lot more complexity. So we've defined multiple layouts here. And what we can do with multiple layouts is using the remote control or the keyboard is switch what's loaded in the multiviewer to give different views depending upon what's happening. It can be really useful for operators that need to look at different things depending upon what's happening. If we look at layout one, though, we can then see, if we zoom out a little bit, a slightly more complicated setup. 
So here we can see we've got multiple players with different labels. Again, we're using the clock and the labels and some branding, and we're showing a bit more useful information on here. But if we drill across to layout two, we can see we've set layout two up as a simple full screen. And layout three has been set up with some slightly different video sizes. And layout five has been set up as a very dense layout to let us show quite a lot of things all loaded at once. So what does this look like when we load it into MultiViewer? Well, a lot of the playout signals aren't going to be there, but we can show you what it looks like even if it's empty. So if we pop this open in here, we immediately can see we've got many more channel counts inside these layouts and that we've got six layouts in the first place. If we choose Apply, we'll see this starts up. Immediately, we get lots of alarms from the trade show sources that aren't here. But what we can do by using the F keys on the keyboard is move between layouts. So with focus on multi-viewer, I hit F2, we load layout two. If I hit F3, we load layout three. F5, we're on the fifth layout. This is a really powerful way to move between different settings without having to do complex restarts. And of course, if we're using this, we can use the remote control and of course look at these outputs over IP as well, which is something we'll cover in another session when we go through the output settings tab. So I hope you've had a bit of time looking at the MultiViewer Layout Designer. There's a lot more information inside the manual as well, covering off some of the elements we haven't touched on here. For example, how you can get things a little bit crooked and then use these buttons to straighten things up and cause alignments and justifications to change. But I'm not going to go through all that in these videos because it's well documented inside the manual. So now you've seen what you can achieve when you use the Layout Designer to customize what's loaded into Synergy MultiViewer and you can see the power of what happens when you add extra layouts and customizable widgets. I hope you'll enjoy watching the next session, which talks about configuring outputs, where we can show you how to do the IP streaming in much more detail.